Security. Это... Good evening, this is Assembly Healthy Moscow. I'm happy to welcome everybody here. Thank you very much for spending the morning here. Good morning. Today, during the exhibition, we presented our projects in the sphere of medical equipment. Russian Federation decreased consumption of alcohol two times. Digitalization of healthcare in this region of Perm is developing for more than 10 years. About cars, we want to design it about people. So it's very powerful that you're in charge of your own destiny. We are happy that Moscow shares its experience. It's isolated from the pavilions, isolated from the hospitals. Tedotol is an extremely important trend in healthcare. Digit and advanced technologies is just a tool, no more than that. It's impossible to overestimate the artificial intelligence importance. We are waiting a miracle. It will never finish. We are perfect program or we have conscious act. So many fundamental questions to be answered. We are all equal, human cyborgs, whatever we are. Our brain and our conscience are two things which, to our point of view, are united, but these are two different parallel processes. Ladies and gentlemen, we decided that 
it's better to show this video about the 18th assembly of Moscow. It was possible because you, each of you, every person who was in this audience and other halls of our assembly made an impossible thing. You created the world of healthcare, the future world of our city and other large cities as we will see them very soon and feel probably all the changes which were made by each of you, by scientists. This assembly would not be possible without you, every one of you in this audience. And I would like to give a round of applause to yourself, to the audience. Thank you for staying with us during these four days of the 18th Assembly Health in Moscow. <coughs> Louder, please. Applaud to yourself, ladies and gentlemen. And now we are about to start the closing open lecture on this stage. What will happen? I believe that many of you have read the schedule, have read the program, and you know what we will have. And the video which was shown before I came to the stage, I would like to talk about the person who will come to the stage and show some video and audio information about him. Please focus on the screen because it's a visit, because it's a video business card of our speaker. Paul McKenna, psychologist, British hypnotist, scientist of behavior, TV presenter and books offer on self-assistance. Self-improvement is the key subject of his research. He works with Hollywood stars, Olympic champions, rock stars, successful businessmen and members of royal families. He is considered one of the most successful author of non-fiction books and the best seller in Great Britain. He was announced a leading guru together with Nelson Mandela and Dalai Lama. Please welcome in the 18th Assembly Healthy Moscow, Paul McKenna. Ladies and gentlemen, please applaud to Paul McKenna. Each, before I start, one question. How do you like Moscow? I love Moscow. People are friendly. Uh, there's so many places to see, places to go. Been absolutely brilliant. I'm very impressed by this conference as well. I uh, gave a little talk earlier, and so many people are fascinated uh, by getting healthy. Thank you, Paul. Please applaud. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, this is about getting control of sugar addiction because all of us um, consume sugar pretty much. In fact, most of us are consuming too much. And the evidence is very clear that as a result of this, we've had a massive amount of obesity. Uh, there are all kinds of other problems that come from massive sugar use, cancer, etc. In fact, the evidence is actually quite overwhelming. Of the five things that are most likely to prematurely kill you, sugar is behind four of them. Yeah. So this is things like diabetes. Cancer loves sugar, by the way. I'm not going to demonize sugar, though, uh, during this talk. In fact, it's more than a talk. This is really a coaching session. So I'm not going to go too much into the science, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate to you how you can change your relationship with sugar and with sugar foods and drinks so that you don't feel like you have to have them. You can take it or leave it, and you are more in control. Because I'm, I'm a psychologist, right? So what we find is that hum, human behavior is the thing that varies when it comes to consuming sugar. Some people go, I really like it, but I, I know it's bad for me, but I just will ignore it. And other people feel a little bit out of control. They think, I want to have chocolate, I want to have colas and sodas, I want to have fast food, and they can't stop themselves. And sugar acts more like a drug than a nutrient. The more you have, the more you need. So who here has, uh, does like having sh sugar foods like chocolate or fast foods or pastries, things like that, or sugar drinks like sodas? Okay, and pretty much everybody here likes it. And you know what, there's nothing wrong with that because it tastes nice, doesn't it? It makes you feel good. But excessive sugar, which pretty much everyone is, um, is, is guilty of consuming, is 
killing us. It's way, if you look at the actual statistics, way more dangerous than cigarettes and things like that in terms of our culture. And it's relatively new, the amount of sugar that we've been consuming. It's only been about in the last 40 or years or so, so since the 60s, so about 40, 50 years. Yeah? And what happened is that we, we started consuming a lot more sugar because it became cheaper. And the sugar makers, the sugar um, uh, companies, decided they would put it into more and more things. Right? Because, uh, firstly, it tastes good. But secondly, like any drug, the more you have, the more you need. So, for example, um, unlike cigarettes, where we can see the danger, sugar is hiding in plain sight. Sugar is now in 75% of the things that you would buy in the supermarket. It's in processed food. It's in sauces. It's in all kinds of things. If you go and have a fast food you know, burger, that is rammed with salt and with sugar. If you drink um, a, like a soda or a cola, that's got salt in it. But sugar hides the fact that it's got the salt in it. So, but the salt makes you want to drink more and more and more. Yeah? So the people that are getting rich are the sugar companies. And the people who are getting sick are us. So I'm not, I, I mean, I sound like I'm on a bit of a crusade, but uh, all I want to do is not stop you from having sugar or frighten you. I just want to make you aware that as a society, as a culture, we're all consuming way more and there's been huge health problems as a result of it. And that will continue unless we address that. So what I do is I work with groups of people, groups about this size or, you know, sometimes larger, and I help them to get more control over their thoughts and then their feelings. Because everybody changes their feelings by external means. Drinking, drug taking, uh, sex, gambling, shopping, and of course food, and top of the list of the foods we need to be really careful of is sugar. And the reason is because when we eat something, our stomach then breaks it down and creates energy from the food that we take. The only one that is different from everything else is sugar. So what it does is it goes into our system and we don't process it in the same way as we do other foods. And as a result, two, several things happen. Firstly, we feel, like, we feel good from it because we get a release of happy neurotransmitters, dopamine. And that, made, that means it feels good and we feel good. And we think we'll have some more. We'll have some more and more. Unfortunately, though, what happens is, uh, is because we're creating so much dopamine, it means that we have to have more and more of it in order to feel that good feeling. Secondly, what sugar does is it, is it interferes with our satiety, our signal of being full. Well, I've often talked to people who they say, you know, I was ramming so much fast food down my throat, and I knew that I was actually full, but I didn't feel satisfied. Because again, that's, that's the problem with the sugar. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a whole bunch of different processes. Um, I'm going to ask you to, this is like um, what I would do with you if you were sitting with me one to one. It's just there are hundreds of other people present. So I'm going to ask you to, uh, to involve yourself in some thought experiments to see if you can change the way that you think and ultimately the way you feel. And as a result of that, you're in better shape. So um, this is not to say you never have sugar again. In, in fact, it would be quite hard to do that. But if you reduce the amount, or it was a conscious decision, rather than a, I, I feel upset, I'm, I'm just going to grab as much chocolate and stuff it in my throat. That's the chocolate being in charge, and not you. Does, does anyone here have a particular uh, love of chocolate, for a, for a start? Anyone? Yeah? Anyone feel out of control around chocolate? Yeah? That's it. So, uh, anyone here um, who's out of control around chocolate like to join me on the stage? Yeah? You would? There's a lady there. That lady, come and join me, man. Please come and join me. Let's give her a nice round of applause, please. All right, come on up. Okay. So, hello. What's your name? Uh, Lena. Okay. And why have you attended the conference? What is it you've come to to, to get from it? No. To be honest with you, I eat a lot of sweets. Candice. <laughs> okay, yes. Right, so what is it you've come to get from the conference? 
Actually, I would like to learn how to overcome this addiction, sugar addiction, because if I work a lot, and if I'm in a bad mood, I need a chocolate, I need a chocolate bar, a candy. If I eat one, I want another one and another one. The headset's playing up. This is the connection at the top. Okay. So, so you've got... Right, sorry, so you say you've got a little bit of a sugar addiction going on. No. Yes, I'm a sugar addicted person. Okay. Is it chocolate specifically or is it all sweet things? No, в основном конфеты. Any candies. Chocolate candies. Mainly. Favorite uh, chocolate candy? Да. Yeah, of course I have. The name of it is? Столичные. 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 Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to use a psychological technique to change the way you feel about Stanichia, right? So if I said, on a scale of one to ten, how strong is your desire? One's the least, ten's the most, what number would it be? Ten. Right, so I've got my work cut out for me. Okay, now, what I'm going to ask you to do, because we've got, what we've got here is we've got a compulsion for the chocolate. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a repulsion. We're going to find something that makes a food that makes you feel sick, that makes you go, oh, it can't be I don't like, it has to be yuck. Yep. Okay, yep. So people choose different things. Some people say it's anchovies, some people say broccoli. What's the food that if you ate it would make you feel sick? Broccoli. Tasted broccoli. What would it do if you tasted broccoli? No, what? It's disgusting. I don't like it. Okay, right. Now, what we're going to do is here we go. So, I'm going to ask you to imagine, if you close your eyes, imagine putting a bit of chocolate in your mouth and chew it. Just chew it, that's it, keep chewing. But as you bite into the chocolate, there's broccoli in there. That's it, keep chewing it and taste the broccoli. Chocolate and broccoli, sanichia and broccoli. Taste the two things, that's it. Every time you taste the chocolate, it's actually broccoli flavored. Oh, okay, and swallow it down, swallow it down. Ooh, ooh. And then stop. I'm sorry, I meant to make you feel a bit uncomfortable there. So, oh, are you feeling okay now? Yeah, okay. Now, open your eyes. Now, think about your favorite chocolate. On a scale of 1 to 10, how strong is the desire now? Zero. Not at all. Hang on, we're not finished yet. What we just did was we took a compulsion and a repulsion and we stuck them together in the human mind, in the imagination. And we, we experienced what it would be like to have chocolate, fra- sorry, broccoli flavored chocolate and the compul- compulsion and the repulsion, one wiped out the other. Now, I'm not saying you'll never eat chocolate again. Stanichio, is that the, the chocolate you like? Горький шоколад, не знаю. The dark chocolate. Which chocolate do I like? Столичные. Any desire? Oops. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me show that. Things here all around my ears. Oh, you can. Can you? Thanks. Thank you very much. Ah, perfect. Thank you very much. That's great. Great. Thank you. So, can you get any desire? No, at the moment, no. At the moment, no. We're all going to do this in just a moment, you see. So what I like to do is, is to demonstrate with somebody. And then before, before we finish, what I want you to do is I'd like you to close your eyes and 
that's it, and remember a time you felt very, very good. Return to that time like you're back there again now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel those good feelings deep inside. That's right. And give those feelings a color, and move the color up to the top of your head and down to the tips of your toes. That's good. And feel this really good feeling over and over again. And I want you to take it in your imagination into the future, into times when you would have eaten chocolate to comfort yourself. But instead, you just have these good feelings anyway. That's it, good. See what you'll see in the future, hear what you'll hear, and feel how good you feel. That's right. Free of unnecessary cravings. Free to decide whether you want to take it or leave it. And when you feel good, tell me yes. Great. Yes. Thank you. Come on back out. <laughs> it was, I felt so good that I didn't want to open my eyes. Thank you so much. You, do you have any desire for chocolate? This, if you think of Stan Nietzsche, I think I've said it all. Okay. If you think of that, can you get any desire going? Okay. Not at all. Thank you very much. Just give a nice round of applause, please. Okay. Okay. So, let's all do that ourselves, right? Um, this isn't so that we never eat chocolate again. It's that when we look at it, we go, if you go, you see a bar of chocolate and you go, I've got to have it, and you demolish the whole bar of chocolate, the chocolate's in charge and not you. So what we do with this process now is we're going to take a compulsion and a repulsion. So what I'd like you to do is to think about a food, particularly if it's a sugar food or a drink that you're out of control around. So it might be chocolate, it might be candy, it might be pastry, it might be, you know, some people use this on bread, you know, just because, um, you know, bread's a carbohydrate as well, but, you know, or something like that. Or it might be a beverage, it might be Coca-Cola or Pepsi, it might be some sort of other soda, whatever it is. And I want you to think about, on a scale of 1 to 10, how strong is the desire for you to have that? Oh, yeah. Oh, a nice cold Coca-Cola. You know, the recommended amount of sugar we're supposed to have each day is 30 grams. One can of soda has got 35 in it. So I think from that, you probably go, oh, hang on, if I'm having three of those a day, that's three times more than I should be, right? And that's just the soda. That's before we get to the food. So think about a food or beverage that you are out of control around. And what I'd like you to do is like you to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. One's obviously the least in terms of desire. 10 is the most. Okay. Now, I need you to think about a food or beverage that it's not just you don't like, that if you ate it, you would go, Ugh, yuck. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Something that really revolts you. Right, here's the magic. So, if you, if you want to close your eyes and do this, I'd like you to imagine you're chewing or drinking the food or the beverage that you're out of control around, and as soon as you start to, you taste the food that, or the beverage that revolts you. So you have the two tastes going on at the same time, and as you're trying to maybe eat that chocolate or whatever it is, I'd like you to taste the food that revolts you. That's it. Absolutely revolts you. And imagine there's some hair from a barber's shop floor has got mixed in with it as well. That's right. And you're trying to chew that chocolate or whatever it is that you're out of control around. And it's, oh my goodness, it's, it's tasting really, really awful. Oh. And, and then when you're ready, swallow it down. And then open your eyes, come on back out. Who here finds when they think about that food or beverage right now, it's not as, as it's, it's a lower number than it was. Show me, please. Yes. <laughs> lower number. Good, good. Let's just practice it one more time, shall we? So I want to make sure, this is, a, this will make a bit, ah, fantastic. Oh, we get, we get lots of people. Great. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's just try it again. Once again, try and eat your favorite chocolate or your favorite sugar food and mix it in with the thing you hate. And you've got a few hairs in there as well from the floor. Oof and then swallow it down. 
you know, I've done this technique with people for years now, for about, ooh, probably 20 years. And frequently people come up to me and they say, you know that thing you did uh, where you make me stop, stop eating chocolate? I say, yes, yes, I haven't had any in five years. And it didn't feel like I was missing out. Because that's, again, you see, one of the problems with any craving, compulsion, addiction, is people think they're going to be missing out, and they've got a tough life out, and life won't be as much fun. But I'm saying that you don't have to feel like you're missing out, because it's fine to enjoy sugar in, say, alcohol or you know, food or other beverages, but it's the excess of it that's of a great concern and should be to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the next part of that technique that I just did, because we've, we've taken away the desire, we've, we've, we've reduced the desire for the chocolate or whatever the sugar food or beverage is. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a good feeling inside you and take that in your imagination into the future, right? Because good feelings are chemistry and electricity inside our brain and our body, right? And how we generate those is we either remember something good that was happening to us or we imagine something good that did happen. So if, it, if it's okay, close your eyes once again, please, ladies and gentlemen. And remember a time when you felt really, really good, where everything was going your way or something wonderful had happened, and return to that time like you're back there again now. See what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel how good that feels. Yeah. Keep remembering it. That's right. Make the colors rich and bright and bold. And the sounds loud and the feeling strong. That's right. And notice where this feeling, this good feeling, is strongest in your body. And give it a color. And move that color up to the top of your head and down to the tips of your toes. And double the brightness. Double it again. Double it again. Double it again. That's right. Double it again. Double it again. Oh, yeah. And. When that feels really, really good, take that good feeling into the future, into times when you would have wanted or environments where you would have wanted to have your sugar, food, or beverage. But instead, you don't have them, and you feel good. You feel really good for no reason. Take this good feeling into your home life, your work life, dealing with difficult people or challenging situations, and you feel good for no particular reason other than we programmed it into your subconscious mind. And when you're ready, open your eyes, come on back out. Now, who here feels quite good right now? Oh, nice. Great. So it's my objective to get you to feel really good uh, before we finish. So we're going to do this, we're going to do another technique in just a moment, but what we're going to do then is we'll do some question and answer, and then we'll do a mass hypnosis session. That's how it's going to go. Because a lot of people, I've noticed, consume way too much sugar to control their feelings, as I mentioned at the very beginning. And it certainly will do that. You know, it's, um, it, it, you know sugar absolutely changes how we feel. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just if we're doing it to excess, it's a problem. But there are lots of other ways to control our feelings. And um, I'd like someone to come and join me on the stage who feels sometimes they get emotionally overwhelmed. It's all, like it's all too much for them, you know. And it can be in a particular situation. It could be when you have... There's a lady there, lady with the glasses. Yes, come and join me, please. Let's give her a nice round of applause. Right. Let me put this uh, thing back on. <laughs> Unless you... Do you speak English? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, great. Okay, I'll leave this here. Perfect. Right. So, hello, what's your name? Irina. So, I, I, Irina. 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 Right. And where, whereabouts are you from? I'm from St. Petersburg. Okay. St. Petersburg. And what you said that sometimes you get feelings of, of, of being overwhelmed. Oh, yes. Yes. Can you tell me when those feelings happen? You mean bad or good? The, ba the bad ones, not the good ones. Oh, the bad ones. Uh, when people are saying bad things to me, when they are not satisfied and try to uh, transmit all these feelings to me, yep. uh, 
at this moment, I feel really bad. Okay. And unfair things also. Yeah. I cannot manage. <laughs> okay. Now, what you've just told me, Elena, is that when people are mean to you, you feel overwhelmed and, you, and the feelings are too much, yeah? So, yeah. Okay. Now, on a, so when you think about those times, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1's the least, 10's the most, when you feel that happening, how strong are the feelings? Oh, it, most often it's 10. 10. Okay. We're going, to do, we're going to do a particular technique, and this is from the discipline of Aikido. Aikido is a defensive martial art. So it's all right, we're not going to be doing any combat. But what I want you to do is I want you to push harder and harder on my shoulder right now. Harder and harder. Uh, yeah, and if you carried on, you'd push me over, because I'm up here in my head, right? Now, I'm going to move my attention, my center of being, and I'm going to put it in my tummy, in my stomach. And I want you to push now on my shoulder. See? And I, yeah, so I'm not using any strength to resist you, but I've changed my, my center of balance by moving my attention. Let me do that with you. So if I just ask you to turn this way, that's a great. Now, let's just test in the clear, first of all. So if I go like that, you're like that. And if I go like that, there you go. So Elia is in her head, right? So look out in front of you. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to put your attention where my fingers are clicking, down here. In your, in your tummy. Put your brain in your tummy. Yep. Put your brain in your tummy. That's it. And hold one. We call it one point in Aikido. Now I'm going to push as hard as I can. And I can't push Ilya over. Now, are you using any physical strength to resist me? No. No. Nope. But you've become physically stronger. Also, you're about to learn you've become psychologically stronger. Right? which is very useful for when we get overwhelmed and we think, I know what I'll do, I'll comfort eat, I'll have some sugar food. Yep. So what I want you to do is think about when people are mean to you and they say those things that upset you, on a scale of 1 to 10, it was a 10, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I'd like you to hold one point again, get strong, strong like a bull, yeah? And think about those people saying those mean things to you. What number are they now? I feel stronger. I would say two. Yes. Good. <laughs> what number is the, is the, is the overwhelm at? Uh, sorry? What number is the, the emotion at now? Two. 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 It's a two. Now, I know it's wild, isn't it? People hang on a minute. Surely you have to do like hours and hours of therapy. Not these days. Not necessarily, that is. So keep doing Keep thinking about the people saying the mean things, the challenging things. And you feel strong, right? Yes. We're all going to do this in just a moment. Strong like a bull. That's a good. There we go. Now, what I'd like you to do is imagine you're in that situation, and even though people are being critical, everything goes perfectly the way you want it to. See what you'll see, hear what you'll hear, and feel how good you feel. Nice. That's it. And now imagine there's a challenge or two. Somebody says something really awful to you. They really upset you, but you're still strong. That's right. And even if it's challenging, you still feel okay. That's right. And then go back to it going really well again. That's a good. Brilliant. Okay. So when you think about people saying mean things and upsetting you now, what's the difference? I feel strong. You feel strong. <laughs> you don't feel upset? No. Okay. So, if you could stay here just for a moment, thanks. The reason we do this is because all of us get stresses, get, you know, challenging moments, and one of the most common ways to change our feelings is go eat on them or, you know, have a, a sugar drink, yeah? I, could, you, could everyone stand up, please? And what I'd like you to do, yeah, if you could stand up. I'd like you to get with a partner. So what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through this technique. <clears throat> so partner up. And I'd like one of you to stand like Elia is standing here, and the other to the side like this. Now, gently wobble the other person. Okay, now, I'd like the person that's going to do this process will say, I'm A and you're B, right? So go A, B. 
Yep. Now, B, put your brain in your tummy. A, click your fingers, tell them where to put it. There you go. Now, gently push on their shoulder. They should be much stronger. Keep your brain in your tummy. That's it. There you go. That's it. Keep, keep, keep your attention here. Have several goes at it to make sure you've got the hang of it. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's good. Now, when you're strong, what I'd like you to do is I would like you to imagine you're in a situation that throws you a bit off balance, that makes you stressed, that makes you upset. You know, sometimes, some people go, giving a presentation, very stressful. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Or going to see their boss or bumping into their their ex-partner or something like that. It could be any number of things, right? But something that makes you stressed and you want to go and control that stress with some kind of sugar, food or beverage. And when you've got it, think about on a scale of 1 to 10 how stressful it is. 1's the least, 10's the most. And think of what number it is. Is it an 8? Is it a 9? How strong can you get it? Next, I'd like you to put your attention back in one point. There you go. Push, push on the shoulder. Push on the shoulder, that's a good. Hold one point. Brain in your tummy. Now, think of that person or situation that used to throw you off balance, but now you are strong. <laughs> You're really strong. And keep going through that. Imagine, imagine the whole thing goes perfectly the way you'd like it to. What do you see? What do you hear? And how differently do you feel? And then imagine a bit of a challenge comes in, but you're still strong thinking about that thing that used to throw you off balance, but now you're able to handle it. Okay. And then imagine it all goes exactly the way you'd like it to. That's it. And then stop. Okay, now we're going to change roles. So B, you're in charge. A, you're the subject. Okay. So, first of all, B... Wobble A. So there you go. That's a good. <laughs> Excellent. Now, what we're going to do now is <clears throat> A, put your attention in your tummy. B, there you go. That's it. Hand down here. That's a good. And then gently push on their shoulder. And notice that they've become strong. Strong. Yes, it's strong. Lovely. Now, do it a couple more times just to make sure you've got the hang of it. Head strong. <clears throat> strong, strong, strong. Now, when, the, when that's it, you can push on the shoulder and they are strong. Great. So, what we're going to do next is, we're going to think about a person or a situation that throws us off balance. Right? And, when you think of it, think of how much it upsets you or worries you and rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. And then think about what number it is. 8, 9, something like that. Now, hold one point, put your brain in your tummy, and get strong. And when you're strong, that's it, a, B, push on A's shoulder. When you're strong, think about that person or that situation that was throwing you off balance and think about it and imagine that's it, what it'll be like because you're going at it strong see what you'll see hear what you'll hear and feel how good you feel being strong in this situation that used to overwhelm you that's great that's it and then have it go perfectly the way you'd like it to that's a good have it go perfectly the way you want it to. See what you see, hear what you hear, feel how good you feel. And then, 
Imagine a challenge or two happens. Yeah, that's a good. See what you see, hear what you hear, feel how good you feel. That's it, it's challenging or it goes perfectly. So whatever happens, you remain strong. Come on back out. Please have a seat back down. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. So, the point of this technique and really what I wanted to do with you today is to show you that you've got much more say over your thinking and your feelings. And, you know, by using these sort of techniques, you can have that. Because we can't control everything that happens to us in life. But we have a big say in how we think and how we feel. Now, a lot of people don't know that. They say, oh, these feelings just happen, I have no control over them. Sometimes, sure. But a large part of the time, we can change how we feel by the sort of things that we're doing here. You know, years ago, I remember I helped this lady quit smoking. And I bumped into her. See, the beauty of this technique is no one knows you're doing it. You can be sitting anywhere and just do it. Suddenly put your brain here, calm. I bumped into this lady and um, I said, how's, how's it going with the smoking? She says, oh, I, I, said, I haven't had a cigarette, but I want to because I've had the most terrible day. Everything's gone wrong. I said, how upset are you on a scale of 1 to 10? She, how strong is your desire to have a cigarette on a scale of 1 to 10? She went, 10. So I, we were standing in a public place. I said, do you know the thing we did where you put your brain in your tummy? She went, yeah. I said, why don't you do that now? She goes, okay. Hmm. I said, where's the stress right now? Where, where's the desire for a cigarette? She went, nine. Tell me when it goes to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, bam. She went, I don't feel stressed and I don't want a cigarette. I said, I know. It's amazing, isn't it? What do I do if it comes back? I went, do that again. So the reason I mention this is because a lot of people these days, you know, suffer stress, and the simple solution is a sugar food. And part of the whole issue with sugar is, foods and beverages is the way they get advertised. You know, you often see some beautiful, slim person enjoying a fruit juice. Now, fruit juice, I, I mean, I, this again was a surprise for me to learn, it's always marketed as being healthy for you. But once it becomes a juice, it's not. When you, if you actually eat the, an orange, it's, um, uh, the, the fruit itself, it's got fiber in it. So all that does is that fills the stomach, but also it stops um, the juice, um, basically, I, yeah, I'm, without getting complicated on the science, basically it stops it becoming sugar. Because as soon as you make something into a concentrate, you've changed the way your body processes it. Yeah? So much as I, I used to love an orange juice, I used to have it every morning, I might as well have just tipped... Um, a, 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 you know, um, a load of sugar down my throat. It's the equivalent thing. And so, with this, what I'm finding is that more and more people want to have control over how they think and feel so that it affects their behavior so they can, if you like, they can modify their behavior so they don't consume so much sugar. I mean, the reason I haven't talked about the, all the science behind uh, sugar and the, you know, the dangers, etc., is because a lot of people are, are aware that sugar or too much sugar is a problem. And also, there's tons of it online. You can see all the science there. What I wanted to do with you today, ladies and gentlemen, is give you some techniques that you can use so that in future, when you think about sugar foods and sugar beverages, you don't feel like, I'm out of control, I've got to have them. That you go, hang on, do I want to take it or leave it? And that is freedom. Because if not, if you can't have one piece of chocolate without demolishing an entire bar, as I said earlier, the chocolate's in charge and not you. And so, by giving you more control over your thoughts and your behaviors, you have more control over your life. People that are obese or overweight um, and consuming too much sugar and putting themselves in danger, they don't wake up each morning and go, you know what, I'm really going to put myself at risk today. I'm going to endanger my health. No, what happens is, first of all, they're not aware of how, with the danger of too much sugar, but also 
they're not necessarily aware of how they can control it. And before we are finished here today, what we'll do is we're going to do a number of, um, we're going to do another thought experiment that involves hypnosis. But before that, we're going to have a little question and answer session. But I'd also like to show you how it is you can create some good feelings. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another process in just a moment. And I'm sure you've heard of Pavlov's dogs. The famous scientist, he would feed his dogs and ring a bell. Feed the dog, ring a bell. Feed the dog, ring a bell. Eventually, he'd just ring a bell and the dog's mouths would salivate. Now, there's no connection between the bell and the food until he created one by having them happen at the same time. So in just a moment, I'm going to ask you to remember some times you felt good and squeeze your thumb and middle finger together on one of your hands. So we're going to create an associational link between the squeeze of the thumb and finger and good feelings. And then we're going to take those good feelings and put them in your future so that when you arrive at home or at work or at various places, you feel good for no other reason than we've programmed your mind to do so. In the same way, athletes mentally rehearse running a race over and over again, or, you know, they might, golfers might imagine taking a shot over and over again. And so what they're doing is they're programming their mind and their body to perform in a particular way. So let's do that now, if you, if you want to. Put your feet on the floor and just close your eyes for a moment. And I'd like you to remember a time that you felt really, really good. See what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel how good you felt. Return to that time like you're back there again now. Make the colors bright, the sounds loud, and the feeling strong. And when that feeling feels strong, squeeze your thumb and finger together on one of your hands now. Create an associational link between that good feeling, that's right, and the squeeze of your thumb and fingers. Because in a minute or two, I'm going to ask you to squeeze your thumb and fingers together, and wow, the feeling will come back. So whenever you need a good feeling burst, you'll just squeeze your thumb and fingers together and go, yes! That's it. Keep remembering that good time. See what you saw, hear what you heard. Feel how good you felt. Squeeze thumb and fingers together and create an associational link between that good feeling and the squeeze of your thumb and fingers. And do it one more time. See what you saw, hear what you heard, and feel how good you felt until you're feeling really, really good. And then I'd like you to take that good feeling into the future. Have that feeling all this evening. Have that feeling tomorrow. Take that feeling into your home life. Imagine feeling this good in your home life. Imagine feeling this good in your work life. So what will you see? What will you hear? What will you feel if you feel this good in your work environment? Dealing with people you like or maybe dealing with difficult people. That's it. You've still got good feelings going on. And then take it into any other environment where you might have felt overwhelmed or felt like you had to have some sort of sugar beverage or some sugar food, but you feel good without it. That's it. Feeling good for no reason other than we have programmed your unconscious mind to feel good. That's right. When you're ready, open your eyes. 
come on back up. Now, who, who feels good, by the way? Right. And there's more. Right? So, squeeze your thumb and fingers together again. And remember the happy memory. Who finds that when they squeeze their, their thumb and fingers together and they remember the happy memory, they feel good? Great. Great stuff. So you've got good feelings at your fingertips. Right? So say things are not going well, and you're thinking, oh, I'm feeling overwhelmed here. You can either stop, put your attention here, get calm, strong, calm, strong, and then push your thumb and fingers together and generate a good feeling. Mm. Some people do this um, before, they, before they eat anything. Yeah? They actually go, before I'm going to... I'm going to drink that soda, or I'm going to eat that chocolate, or whatever it is. I'm actually going to make sure that I feel good. So hang on. I'm going to put my brain in my tummy, get calm, squeeze my thumb and finger together, get calm, feel good. Right. We've got about 15 minutes to do some question and answer, right? You can ask me anything you want to. I, I do my best to answer it. And then, to finish off after that, we're going to do about 10 minutes of hypnosis just to finish the day. That involves profound relaxation and also feeling these positive feelings in an even stronger way than we've been feeling them already. So you'll feel, at the end of that, you'll feel very refreshed, very relaxed, and very alert. You'll feel wonderful. But first of all, let's, um, let's, we're going to do 15 minutes of, of Q&A. And so if you want to ask me a question, if you come to the microphone here, the way I look at it is I think that most questions that people ask in the audience end up tending to be for everybody else. They go, oh, I was thinking of asking that. So, hello, sir. Um, do you want to ask me a question? No, sure, dear friends, I will help you a little bit. Oh. Paul, I can help you. Please applaud to Paul. Thank him very much for this unforgettable 45 minutes. I was behind the scene, I was squeezing my fingers, and I was pushing my assistants. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. One question per person. We have 15 minutes. Good evening, Paul. My name is Konstantin Novikov. Please tell me, your techniques include more hypnosis or coaching technologies, or your, or, or your or methods invented by you, maybe there was a school which formed you, which educated you as a coach, as a, tra as a trainer, as a... Okay. question. So, I learned uh, hypnosis, and I learned something called NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And I learned them from Dr. Richard Bandler. And um, I watched videos of people. This is the great thing nowadays, is you can watch so many good coaches online. You can watch uh, people from different um, uh, parts of the world doing different things. So when I started out at the beginning of the talk, I was using, um, I used a simple NLP technique of imagination. And this thing just now is a very common NLP technique. So, uh, and then, of course, I put in the, the Aikido thing as well. So what I find is if anyone can do something exceptionally, you know, if they're particularly brilliant at helping people with relationships or confidence or phobias or weight loss or something like that, then I go and study them and try and find out what I can. But the great thing is, because years ago when I first started doing this, there were only books and a few videos. Now, there's tons of really great stuff all over the internet. Most of my, tra my hypnotic trances in loads of languages are all over the internet. And I was looking the other day, because lots of people have uploaded them. They're all over YouTube. So you can learn from all those different people and everything that they have by just Googling it. Yeah? You just put it into Google, and you'll find the things will pop up. And this is the great thing is now, you don't have to sit and read the book. Someone will explain it to you on a little video. You know? So that's where I learned from, sir. And, 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 and now, uh, the people I learn from and the things that I learn from them, everyone can have access to because it's on the internet. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Большое okay. спасибо вам за вопрос. Пожалуйста. Thank you very much for your question. Please, the next question. Please stay closer to the microphone. Don't forget to introduce myself. My name is Elena, and my question is as follows. A couple of days ago, I had to take 12 liters of Coke due to medical reasons, due to medical indications, uh, with water and without water. It's a huge intoxication. I wish I never have it again. I had uh, problems with my kidneys, with my head. I had a headache. And now you are teaching us how to overcome the sugar addiction. And uh, cola, Coke really helped me in my case. But maybe you should not teach people how to overcome this addiction, but to teach them to eat sugar within the reasonable limits, within the reasonable volume. We know that everything is poison, everything is drug, everything is medicine. Only doses is what matters. I wholeheartedly agree with you that th this isn't to say never eat sugar again, which would be difficult. This is to say that the scientific research says we're all consuming, pretty much all of us are consuming too much sugar. And that's because the food is labeled in a particular way, which doesn't tell you that there's sugar in it. There are 50 different names for sugar. And you know, a lot of people didn't know, I didn't know until a few years ago, that orange juice, if it's um, a concentrate, is just like pouring liquid sugar. And so I'm not um, trying to demonize sugar. I think I quite like um, sugar occasionally. I like a drink of alcohol. Um, I very rarely have sweet things these days, but that's just the way I am. But I don't want to stop anyone else from enjoying it. So you're absolutely right. If you needed to have Coca-Cola for a medical reason, um, I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a psychologist. But if a medical doctor told you, then that would be medical advice. That would be something different. But I'm certainly not saying we should never touch sugar again. It's not the devil. It's great. And it's just a bit like this. Champagne is a nice treat to have. But you don't have it all day, every day, because otherwise you'd get nothing done and you'd make bad decisions and that sort of stuff and it would affect the quality of your life. Champagne is nice for a celebration. And that's what I'm suggesting is, is it's absolutely fine to have sugar, but I'm, my concern is the people's well-being, because this is what I do, I, I work in helping people, and lots of people tell me, I'm out of control around sugar. I just, I just got to have it. I've got to have chocolate. Oh, I've got to have a Coca-Cola or something. And I say, do you want me to help you make it so that it's a choice? Yeah? So that's what I'm doing. But thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome, and thanks a lot. It was really, really useful. Oh, good. Well, it's not finished yet, either. We've still Спасибо got some more. Okay. Okay. The next question, please. We have 10 minutes. Good evening. My name is Yelena. I have two questions. Could you please tell me, if a person cannot be hypnotized, I, is it possible to apply your techniques? Your techniques are applicable only to overcome the food addiction or For example, when you are overwhelming, you are aggressive and you cannot make any decision to overcome some impediments. What, what, what addictions uh, can you help us with, I mean, to overcome uh, addictions in order to become or uh, you work only with food addictions? Okay. Well, firstly, I've never found anyone that can't be hypnotized, right? Some people it takes a little longer than others or you have to vary the trance that it is you're doing. But everyone has got the ability to relax deeply and focus on one thing to the exclusion of all other things, right? You certainly can't make hypnosis work to change a problem with every person every time. But when we do studies into, certainly the way I do hypnosis, It's about 7 in 10 people, 70% of people say they've had a significant improvement or change. Yeah, something noticeable. But there are people it doesn't work for every time, and I can live with that. But the going into a trance and relaxing deeply is very similar to meditation. It's very similar to when you're falling asleep at night. You're not quite asleep, but you're not awake either. And it's a lovely kind of daydream. And for me, that's what hypnosis is. Yep. Now, helping people with things like addictions, um, there's several things that I do. 
I help people who are like smokers or people that are addicted to chocolate and things like that. And what I do is I get them firstly to, uh, to think about if they continue doing that, if they continue smoking, how will their health end up in a few years? Or if they continue having way too much chocolate, what are the health consequences? So they've got something to move away from. They go, oh, crikey, I'm going to be really unwell. and Oh, this is awful. And then I get them to move towards something they'd like to have. I go, so let's say you've quit smoking. Let's say you've, you've got the sugar intake way down. You, you can choose to have chocolate when you want, when you don't. You'll feel good, won't you? They go, yeah, I'll have loads of energy. I'll feel really proud that I've taken control of my life and I'm not a slave to cigarettes or a slave to chocolate anymore. And then what I do is I try and get rid of unnecessary stress because a lot of the scientific research around addiction these days shows that it's driven by stress, what we call inescapable stress. So that might be that you live, these people who live in a really rough ghetto, you know, and they're, they're worried, that they're, they're in fear all the time because it's a violent place, that's inescapable stress. So it's no wonder they become addicted to drugs or, or to alcohol. But sometimes you look at someone who grew up in a very wealthy um, house and they went to a nice school and everything, but they've become an addict. Their inescapable stress is that their parents shipped them off to boarding school and they never showed them any love. So deep, deep inside, they feel that stress of not feeling good enough. And that's why they compensate with an addiction. So what I do is I help them overcome the inescapable stress. And I don't have time to do it here today, but there are loads of, there's a really brilliant, there are loads of videos online of a new technique I use, um, which I, I helped to develop, um, but it's the work of my friend, Dr. Ronald Rudin, where you touch the side of your arms like this. Do you want to just try this? Just do this for a minute. Yeah, just do this. This, ooh. When you do this, it's soothing. Ooh, feel that, yeah? When you were a baby, your mother rocked you like this. You're hardwired to feel good when you do this, yeah? Do this, that's it. And you touch here, mm, and move your eyes left to right. Left to right, left to right. This technique... It's really good for reducing stress. It's called havening. So if you put havening into Google, it'll probably show you a video of me doing this. And, yep, it'll make you feel good. Right? We've got time for another question. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We have four minutes. That probably would be one of the final questions. Get another in, yes. Oh, microphones. Not working. Hello? I've got one here, if it helps. Yeah, why don't you use this one? Oh, you're, oh, you're going to do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Paul, for the session. Pleasure. And if you let me ask you two short questions. First one, last year, during your coaching for Hollywood stars, as you did, as they yeah. say, what is the most common and frequently asked problem? And uh, my second question is, uh, personally you, uh, what problem uh, from the people that they ask you to solve, um, uh, for, for which problem you sympathize the most? Well, th those are two great questions. One of the things I found, when well, I was living in Hollywood for 10 years, and people across the world have more or less the same sort of problems. Obviously, in some parts of the world where there's war and there's famine, their, their primary problem is survival, right? But people living in sort of the everyday world, the civilized world, if you like, um, we, we get the same sort of issues. Um, things like lack of confidence, very often, or it could be a specific fear or phobia. Uh, things like um, a lot of people these days have problems sleeping, right? And so it'll be insomnia, or it will be some other thing like smoking, some other sort of, you know, addiction or compulsion. And, you know, I, I kind of, um, I have, um, I empath or sympathize with, with all people, really, pretty much. Not bad people, but, you know, good people, ordinary people that have a problem that holds them back. And so, um, I, I've ended up, in the last few years, I've been working on people with what's called post-traumatic stress or trauma. And we use this sort of technique. 
This thing is deceptively simple. So I sit and I touch the side of their arms, and they're feeling it stressed and upset, and a few minutes later, they feel great, right? And we do it again and again and again until they feel much better. So that's really... So what I would say is, even if somebody's fabulously wealthy or famous, they still have everyday problems, just like anyone else. And I use lots of different things to help people, but hypnosis, the NLP visualization techniques, and this, the new havening, which is called a psychosensory therapy. That's up there as amongst my favorites. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, got time for one more question. Yes, one more question. Yeah. Finally, вопрос, пожалуйста, задавайте. Oh, hang on one sec. Okay. Добрый вечер. Сейчас секунду, секунду. Welcome to Moscow. Good evening. Welcome, Paul. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Here is my question. You mentioned a woman who uh, uh, was able to not to eat chocolate for five years. So your methods, uh, how how long can they last? Or uh, does it depend on the condition of a person who comes to you uh, and how uh, open he or she is to those methods and uh, ways to cure them? So, uh, it's a very good question. So, some people, you just do one technique on them and that's it. They're fixed forever, a proportion of people. Other people, you need to reinforce it and do it multiple times. Or some people, for example, are fine and they have a crisis. You know, they lose their job, their wife leaves, something like that. And that's why they then return to smoking or excessive eating, because they're going through a tough time. But, um, so everyone is different, right? I mean, it was Ilina, who I was doing the one point thing with. Sometimes people go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, slowly like, but she just went, bam, two, it's gone. So we're all different, but the neat thing is, is what I'm doing here today, there's a saying, give a man a fish, he eats for a day. Teach a man to fish, and he eats for life. So I, what I was thinking is, what's going to be of most use to you? I could sit and explain sugar, the science behind sugar, the fructose, the suck grows, all this, how it affects the insulin levels, and talk about all of that. And it, it, I hope it would be interesting, but it's not as useful, because... Everyone in this room knows that too much sugar is really bad for them, right? People don't really need to be convinced about that these days. But I wanted to give you some tools, some practical tools to take away so that the next time you're going, oh, I'm feeling unwell for you, hang on. Brain in the tummy. Mm. 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 I'm feeling calm. I'm feeling calm. I feel good. Then go, flip. yeah, good feelings. Yeah. All right. I'm in control. And so the idea is to give you more control back in your life. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Спасибо you. огромное. Давайте поаплодируем всем тем, кто задавал вопросы. Paul, please continue the practice. Uh, thank you very much for the questions and answers. Nice little 10 minutes of hypnosis, right? And let me just explain, first of all, when you go into a hypnotic trance, you do not lose control. It is not the same as being asleep. Although people sometimes fall asleep during the trance because they needed to, because they were tired. So, during this experience, you'll be able to hear everything I'm saying. You'll know what's going on around you, and if there was, say, an emergency, you'd instantly be awake with all the resources that you needed in order to handle that. Now, knowing that means that you can relax deeply in just a moment. And so, you'll be able to hear me speaking, you'll feel comfortable, calm, and relaxed, and we'll go into a nice place. So, just put your feet flat on the floor, please, and your arms in your lap. Make yourself comfortable. We're going to put some relaxing music on now, please. And I'm going to continue talking, and my voice will go with you as you relax deeply. So, take a deep breath in, and let that breath go. And close your eyes. And relax the little muscles around your eyes. And relaxing 
the muscles around your mouth. And relaxing the muscles in your neck. And relaxing your shoulders. Relaxing your chest. Relaxing your stomach. Relaxing your legs. Relaxing your feet. aware of sensations and my voice goes with you as you relax deeper and I'd like you to imagine how you would look if you were twice as relaxed as you are right now Float in to that more relaxed you. See through the eyes of your more relaxed self. Hear through the ears of your more relaxed self. And feel that deeper relaxation. And from this place, imagine how you would look if you were twice as relaxed as you are right now. To float into that more relaxed you. See through the eyes of your more relaxed self. Hear through the ears of your more relaxed self. Feel this deeper relaxation. And I'd like you to think about some way you find really relaxing. Maybe you have a comfortable couch that you sit back and relax in and oh, you feel so rested. And while you feel this calm and relaxed, I'd like you to think about some of the stressful places, environments or people that you have in your life and see them now from this relaxed point of view and feel differently, feel calmer, feel resilient, feel more in control. And I would like to speak with your unconscious mind. I know that the desire for sugar, foods or beverages serves a purpose. But I'd like you to find new ways to get all the good things that excessive sugar was doing for you, but without having excessive sugar in future. And you might know what they are, or you might not know what these new ways are. But you will know that they're possible. And so in future, you'll be able to feel more in control around sugar for the rest of your life. That's right. Take this good feeling and take it into tomorrow. And notice that you feel more in control around sugar foods and sugar beverages. See what you'll see, hear what you'll hear, and feel how good you feel. And take it into next week 
this feeling of feeling strong and in control around sugar foods and beverages and see how much better your life is. That's right. And take it into next month. You're in control around sugar. Foods, beverages, yeah. You go, no, no thanks, no more, I've had enough. And you're able to stop. And then take it into a year from now. And I'd like you to imagine that you've had one of the best years of your life. You've had the best year of your life, yeah. And if that's true, what must have happened in your health? If you've had the best year of your life, what must have happened in your relationships? Personal and professional. What must have happened in your career? must have happened in your finances if you've had the best year of your life what must have happened in terms of your happiness if you've had the best year of your life What must have happened in your spiritual life? And then take this good feeling, notice where it's strongest, give it a color. And move that feeling to the top of your head, down to the tips of your toes, till you are bathing in this good feeling. So tonight, when you sleep deep, your unconscious mind will be generating creative solutions to challenges and problems. It will be looking forward to a positive future where you feel in control around sugar and you feel good for no other reason than we have programmed your mind and body to feel good for the rest of your life. You will be an even happier person for the rest of your life. And soon, it will be time to awaken, to return back here feeling refreshed, relaxed and alert, calm and confident, with a renewed sense of optimism and deep inner joy. So as I count back from 10 to 1, awakening, feeling refreshed, relaxed and alert, with a renewed sense of optimism and real joy, and thinking about all those good pictures in your future of having the best year of your life. 10, 9, 8, that's right, coming back, 7, 6, 5, getting ready to awaken, feeling really good for no particular reason. Four, three, two, one. Eyes open, rise and shine. Oh, you might want a little stretch. Oh, oh. Who feels good, by the way? Yeah. Woo. Fantastic. Thank you for looking. So, I'm just about to finish up. I'm First of all, thank you so much um, for really engaging um, with me and this material. Um, what we covered today was, if you feel out of control around a certain food or beverage, that's a compulsion. You can reduce the compulsion by thinking about a repulsion, a food or beverage you hate. Put the two together, and one cancels out the other. The other thing we did was, we looked at 
Some of the reasons we get triggered to want to suddenly have a, a soda or a bar of chocolate is stress. How can we control emotional overwhelm and stress? Brain in the tummy. Whole one point, strong. We also learned that we can generate good feelings by remembering times in the past when we felt really good. And remember them vividly until we begin to glow with good feelings and then we can capture those and squeeze our thumb and finger and create an associational link. And then finally, we did some hypnosis, profound relaxation, and we imagined a better future, a one where we've really got all those things that will make us even happier than we are already. So all of these things, I hope, will not just leave you feeling good today, but feeling good for well into your future. Thank you very much. I really appreciate uh, uh, coming to Moscow. It's fantastic. God bless. Have a great future. Ваши громкие аплодисменты, Пол Маккена. Пол, thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy your time in Russia, and we'll, we'll ready to see you again. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you so thank much. Thank you. Пол Маккена, ваши аплодисменты, дамы и господа. Ну что, лучшее завершение нашей 18-й ассамблеи здоровой Well, uh, well, couldn't be the better ending of Healthy Moscow Assembly. Uh, even you were with us only today, uh, we are very appreciative to you for that. We have made this event incredible. We brought it uh, to the level of an international event. So be healthy, be happy, and be in, in control of your feelings when necessary. So see you soon at the 19th Assembly Healthy Moscow. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Moscow. Уважаемые участники 18-й ассамблеи «Здоровая Москва». При выходе из зала, пожалуйста, сдайте устройство синхронного перевода. Спасибо за понимание.